Okay, so once again, uh, good morning. I good afternoon. Sorry. So this time our topic is about architecture governance. No, uh, conceptually, architecture governance is an approach containing a series of processes, a cultural in orientation, the set of own, own responsibilities that ensure the integrity and effectiveness of the organizational architecture. So. The goal of the architecture change management process is to ensure that the architecture achieves its original target values, uh, business value. So, and this process will typically provide for the continual monitoring of such things as governance requests, new developments in technology, and changes in the business environment. Uh, the governance framework, of course, acts as an essential supporting structure of a framework of rules and practices by which the board ensures in accountability, fairness, and transparency in both how the company runs and how it communicates with its stakeholders. Okay, to give us more details about the topic, let us all welcome our presenter. Go ahead, sir. Yes, po. Uh, good afternoon po everyone. I am Marlo Apigo, and I'll be presenting po my topic about uh, government, uh, governance, change management, architecture, and compliance. No? Uh, so, uh, to begin with po, no, I'm just going to read uh, my introduction po with a, uh, with a phrase po. And that is at rest, will stay at rest unless an external force acts upon it. This is Isaac Newton's uh, first law of motion. Uh, in the IT world, we can make the generalization that if you have a service that is working as designed, it will continue to provide that service unless it is changed in some way. So this working configuration or baseline is very important because it provides a frame of reference from a known configuration that is operating as designed. So according to the IT Process Institute, 80% of unplanned out outages are due to poorly planned changes. Part of the main reason for these failures is poor or missing change management process. So what is change management? So change management refers to major alteration to an organization's process structure, technology, staff, or culture. So change management is necessary when firms seek to improve their current performance through changing their infrastructure and internal processes and activities. Usually, change management is necessary when a performance gap emerges. That is when there is disparity between existing and desired performance levels. To have an effective change management, it is necessary for managers to understand what, force, uh, what forces drive the change and what forces restrain the change. This form the basis of a force field analysis. So what is a force field analysis? Uh, basically, a force field analysis is a method of looking at change proposed by Kurt Lewin. Uh, the analysis is based on the competitive forces that drive change and restrain change. So there is two force uh, colliding with each other. No? Uh, that's why it's called a force field analysis. Uh, so Lewin suggests a three-step approach to understanding these forces. And these are the following. Number one, we have the unfreezing. It's finding ways of making the need for change so clear that the most people will understand it and support it. Number two, we have changing behavior patterns, which bring to bear new attitudes, values, and behavior that becomes the dominant culture within the organization. And the third one is refreezing. So uh, it introduces supporting mechanisms that consolidate and maintain the new behavior patterns. So here is an example of the force field analysis, as you see here in the diagram uh, on the left side po, no, of, the, of the presentation. Po, no? So as you see here on the left side, each arrow is labeled and the arrow size reflects the strength of the force. So either a driving force or 
uh, restraining force. So as you see here po sa diagram po natin, uh, meron po tayong uh, uh, force against or fa uh, force favoring and meron din po tayong force resisting. No? Okay. Uh, the number of arrows reflect the breadth of force. The length of the arrow represents the length of time taken to put into operation a driving force or overcome a restraining force. So managers can use a force field analysis to complement market information that illustrates the competitive position to employees to reinforce the need for change. This can be the catalyst for changing behaviors that form uh, the basis for improved performance. So here is an example po of a force field analysis with, uh, uh, with the uh, support force and restraining force po. No? So as you see here po, on the left and right side, so in the left side, we have the driving force and then on the right side, we have the restraining force. No? So as much as possible, we aligned uh, the, contradic uh, the contradicting force so that we can see you know, if, if, the, uh, if the advantages will outweigh the disadvantages. No? So we can properly decide if the change is feasible or uh, necessary. So as you see here, po, uh, driving force number one is cost savings, while the restraining force is the cost of technology. As we know, uh, when we try to introduce new technologies, there is always a big upfront value no? or initial investment we, uh, to these things. Po, no? So it will cost you less in the long run, pero at the very beginning, it will cost you to invest uh, a, a, a large sum. No? And then we have here, driving force is efficiency. And then yung restraining force naman natin is cost of training for the staff. So we expect them to be more efficient, but in order to achieve that, we have to spend money for uh, training the staff for the new technology. And then the third one, we have the customer service. And the fourth one, we have the uh, competition. So uh, with introduction to these new technologies, we are expected or we are expecting that there is a improve in our customer service. While in the competition side, we expect a, a bigger uh, competition. Uh, basically, because we are introducing new processes, no, that may be a direct competition with other uh, companies, po, no. Uh, the fourth one, we have wider markets. So, especially if, for example, you are trying to enter the e-commerce, uh, in the e-commerce world, no, yung market natin medyo lalawak siya. And then, yung counter force po natin is market transparency. So, since lumawak po yung market natin, uh, there is or there will be confusion uh, with regards to targeting yung particular markets po natin. Kasi basically, you have now access to all those different markets. No? So, with, uh, with access to those different markets, uh, yung focus natin uh, slightly nagiging thinner. That is why... Uh, ang counterforce natin is the market transparency. Next, we have the uh, marketing economies. And then yung last naman po natin is about uh, the management. So things gets much more complicated uh, with, uh, with the change po na. So uh, rephrasing can be achieved by creating a culture of continuous change whereby innovation and creativity can flourish. This can be achieved in uh, several ways, including developing teamwork, emphasizing peer group acceptance as part of the reward structure, empowering workers to take responsibility, and authorizing workers to make decisions. Eventually, the new culture means that workers become proactive in the change management process. Many firms seek to understand the force field that drives or restrain their efforts to achieve their aims. And in e-business, there are many such forces evident. So, my dear classmates, like yung example po sa atin, uh, yung isang case study po natin no, about Alibaba. So, that is one very good example of uh, rephrasing kasi what they did was they did not limit no, their personnel in terms of uh, what 
they can do, no? Basically, they gave them some sort of freedom for them to change their own process. In line with that, naging proactive po sila, no? They, they, they initiate change themselves, no? Rather than typical workers na do repetitive task lang and, uh, and, and do not ask questions, no? So, uh, yung ganong um, environment, uh, uh, really uh, promotes rephrasing no? dun sa ating uh, workforce po. So, the key factors to be taken into consideration when undertaking change management in e-business includes the following. So, number one, we have the scope of change required. Uh, this may define different processes or different, uh, uh, sorry, this may be in a form of uh, processes or or in uh, separation of processes from different departments, etc. Uh, number two, we have time frame for undertaking each successive stage of change. Because we all know naman there is a proper uh, way for transition. For example, if, for example, you're trying to introduce a new system or you're trying to embed a new technology. So if you're going to transition to a new system, definitely there would be some sort of uh, migration migration plan, migration process. Uh, you also have to uh, retrain your staff, etc., etc. All those things have to be taken into consideration. Next, we have the financing of change. So with the old and new process, you have to recalibrate how you sustain or maintain your um, your manpower and uh, maintenance of uh, necessary technologies. No, so definitely there will also be a change in terms of uh, financing. Uh, fourth one, we have the identification of resources required for implementing change. These resources does not ano lang no mean yung mga tangible things. No, this may also reflect no manpower then po as well. Uh, fifth one, we have the resources to be retained and procurement of new resources. So, ito po, typically mga facilities and hardware. Then, sixth, we have design of the most appropriate organizational structure. So, along with the new technology, definitely there will be a reorganization of uh, in the organization itself. No? Reorganize po siya. No? Like, 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 uh, like nga po sa sabi ni, ni, ni Sir Marmelo po previously uh, na currently we are going to the uh, going to the internet of things we rely on artificial intelligence etc definitely there will be um realignment of processes na instead na gagawin ng tao gagawin na lang ng technology po ano? uh human resource management implication of introducing large scale uh, change since na, na iba nga po yung structure ng manpower natin definitely hr uh the human resource management will also have an implication and then we have level of technology required for effective e-business change and last is level of risk and the likely benefits involved in implementing change management so at this step uh typically we have to uh, analyze yung ating mga uh, risk. Uh, we have to revisit na yung risk management po natin. No? Kasi since we're entering new waters po, we have to put into consideration alit what are the things that are that we are risking po. No? So basically, we have to revisit po our risks. So we have here naman uh, the key aspects of change. There are several important aspects of change that firms have to address when undertaking change management. So in e-business, technology infrastructure plays a prominent role in determining efficiency and performance. So an audit of the performance of technology informs the need for the change. Just as strategy is a process, so the implementation of technology must follow a systematic pathway. So for example, there is a series of implementation activities that are undertaken to transform a newly acquired or developed information system into an operational system for end users. So as you see here on the diagram of the right side, 
uh, from top to bottom, so for implementation activities, first we have the acquisition of hardware, software, and services. Then we have software development or modification. After that, we have the end user training followed by system documentation, which is very important. Uh, if, for example, there would be a transition or, or, or uh, additional manpower that is not involved originally on the plan, so there would be have there we will have an upon a proper documentation for, for for the system. And then last is you uh, we have the conversion, which is either we use parallel pilot phased or planned uh, implementation. No? So the implementation process can only begin once a thorough evaluation of appropriate activities has taken place. This ensures that the correct hardware and software has been selected, that the system has been rigor rigorously tested, that an efficient user documentation system has been developed and all staff receive a suitable training. The implementation process also involves the conversion from a previous system to the new system. Uh, next, for conversion methods, smooth uh, the transition from old to new system, it must include the following, uh, or, or you can, we can apply the following. No? So first one, we have the parallel conversion. It's, it's when an old and new system run in tandem until the development team and management agree to switch permanently to the new system. Second, we have a phased conversion. Only parts of a new system or only a few departments or offices or business units are converted at a time. Third one, we have the pilot conversion wherein one department or business unit acts as a test site for conversion. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. And then fourth one, we have the plunge conversion. Uh, the whole organization converts to the new system at the same time. Uh, with these four um, uh, ways, po, no? uh, I think the, 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 the key factor or the, the main uh, thing to consider po is yung uh, confidence po natin with the uh, new system. Po, no? Kasi po, as you see here, dito po sa four types po natin, uh, the first three indicates a controlled group po, no? Ah, sorry, the second and third lang po pala, no? The phase conversion and the pilot, pilot conversion. Basically, we do not integrate the change dun sa whole, dun sa whole, um, uh, dun sa whole scope, no? Only a small portion or a portion of the system is implemented, no? So, kumbaga, uh, baby steps po, no? With parallel conversion naman po, you are using both the old and new system, probably for one reason that you are not confident enough that the new system will run smooth. So if in case the new system fails, you have the old system still no, available for execution. Po, no? So if the new system fails, you can still, uh, you can you just change back to the old system no? since they are parallelly, parallel, uh, parallelly uh, being used po simultaneously. Yung fourth one naman po is if you're 100% confident no, sa system po natin, you are confident enough to apply it to the whole co whole organization at the same time po. No? So I think this is a matter of confidence lang po dun sa change. No? So it's up to the company to assess their risks. No? Kasi uh, ito pong apat na phases po natin has their own risks and rewards po. Eh. So uh, some, uh, some of them uh, uh, might a while before nila ma-implement as a whole pero it might it it may be much safer while do naman sa plunge sa plunge conversion natin uh, na apply natin siya kagad yun nga lang baka sobrang laki ng risk na so it ano lang depende lang po sa perspective po ano yung mas prefer po natin so other key aspects of change that need to be addressed includes the business model adapted for achieving competitive advantage and the organizational structure and culture that exists within the organization. <clears throat> Change management is used to alter the culture and behavior of workers, and this can be facilitated by structural change. 
as noted previously, structural change can influence culture by altering control function, decision making, processes, lines of authority, and span of control. Next that we have to consider is the so-called scale of change. So manager must determine the appropriate scale of change that is necessary for firms to undertake in order to achieve their aims. Change can differ in scale and intensity, ranging from a paradigm shift to a radical change through business process re-engineering, then to, uh, to the lower scale of incremental change through business process uh, improvement. So we have uh, two terms. We have business process re-engineering, which is a higher scale, and the lower scale, which is business process improvement. Uh, each level of change uh, brings with its own level of risk and reward. So we have a word there, which is a paradigm shift. But what is paradigm shift exactly? So a paradigm shift refers to a radical rethinking of the nature of the business and the nature of the organization. This scale of change usually occur when the organization find it difficult to compete effectively in the industry sector. Its inability to compete will, uh, will be reflected in poor performance, loss making, and low market share. Firms need to reassess their entire uh, raison d'etre, which is reason for being, under circumstances where their current capabilities are in the inadequate to make returns on investment. So to have a better understanding of this so-called paradigm shift, uh, let's talk about a small or a mini case study po now. <clears throat> so I have here a mini case study about uh, Levy. So Levi Strauss, one of the world's leading brand name clothing manufacturer, launched its first website in 1994. So the company was one of the early movers in supporting their marketing and sales via the internet. However, by late 1999, the company had a paradigm shift in its approach to its e-commerce venture. So by 2000, Levy had largely opted out of the online method of selling jeans. And the main reason for the change was the need to preserve relationship with their retail partners. So the internet posed a competitive challenge to uh, retailers by offering uh, customers an additional change through which to transact. So the website service had cost implication for the company too. Customers did not want to incur shipping costs and they wanted to be able to make returns to traditional bricks and mortar scores, uh, stores. Levis were unable to meet the, this customer demands because of the extra cost that the company would incur both in terms of distribution and operation. The website also the website was not advertised effectively due to a company-wide cross-cutting exercise during a downturn in performance in the late 1990s. This resulted in the website failing to attract a critical mass of customers to make the venture viable. So Levy had to radically rethink their whole online strategy in light of the operational difficulties, experience, and increasing cost incurred of providing an online service. So a paradigm shift in thinking resulted in the firm exiting the e-commerce industry and deciding to refocus on their traditional business methods for designing. So manufacturing and selling jeans, this they decided was their true raison d'etre, which is their reason, uh, reason for existing. However, by 2000s or 2002, Levy had again reassessed their strategy, not wanting to be seen as laggards in the e commerce environment. The company took the decision to re-enter the online market. This time, they received the support of the retailer who now sells uh, Levy Jeans online via their own websites that are attached to Levy website. So to sum it up, po, no, to, to, to summarize, no, so Levy decided to enter the e-commerce uh, the e-commerce world. No? Uh, they opted to sell their jeans online uh, kaya lang there is a failure uh, in their so-called no, uh, strategy kasi po uh, upon research in uh, in the in the 90s no unlike po today or, or or recent or in this year no unlike ito pong recent years natin uh, way back in the 90s or early 2000s 
uh, technology or access to internet is hindi pa po ganun ka abundant no some of us probably at that time are still using pagers no and computers is still not uh, it's not the same number of percentage that we have here or number of computer users is not the same number of uh, percentage that we have today it's it's significantly lower so definitely uh, accessibility of the people to this uh, uh, to this uh, platform po is uh, limited po no that is one uh, problem po no second uh, at that time um, yung mga uh, unlike uh, unlike po yung mga uh, business models ng mga uh, courier services po no wherein they opted to lessen the the, the delivery cost uh by by uh by hoarding no the products po and then delivering them no in bulks no hindi po siya ganun ka uh hindi ganun ka diverse po no yung mga services ng courier before so the implication or yung financial strain po for for keeping up nung services po nila for delivery and returning yung items from the supplier to consumer is significantly higher compared po ngayon. So that posed another problem po. Uh, another problem din po ni Levy is nawalan sila ng support with their so-called um, uh, retail partners. No? Kasi uh, they fail to see also that a good percentage ng sales nila is through their retail partners. Since they opted online method of selling their products, uh, there is a backlash din po no, with the retail partners as well. Okay? And then lastly, uh, yung pag-advertise po no, nung kanilang platform also uh, is not enough po. No? So uh, very much uh, sure na hindi alam uh, ng mga ibang tao po na nag exist yung platform po nila. So all of this could have been ano po, no, foreseen ahead of time if they properly conducted their uh, force feed analysis. No? So hindi nila nakita yung mga, yung, yung mga restraining forces po no, na papasok dun sa strategy nila. Therefore, they, they change their, um, uh, their structure. They perform a paradigm shift so they change their source from standard or from no, from old norms papunta sa e-commerce and then then they failed in the e-commerce world they paradigm shift back ulit to the old norm no pero in 2000s on the early 2000s they tried to re-enter the e-commerce world po ulit pero siguro at that time po much more uh, welcoming na po no yung uh, environment for these types of transaction po so yun po so that's a mini case study po about uh, Levina. So previously we talked about two terms po, which is the pre business process reengineering and business process improvement. So business process reengineering po is a higher tier for change now. So let me read this description po. So business process reengineering is a concept developed by Michael Hammer in the 1990. So Hammer argued that computerizing existing processes wasted the opportunity to use a modern IT system as a means of remodeling business processes from scratch. He believed that waste and duplication effort between departments could avoided entirely by rethinking the process. So Hammer advocated a planche approach to conversion whereby the change over to a new system should occur in one radical swoop. Okay? So isang bagsakan po yung change for the whole structure. So BPR uh, has become an important method of implementing strategies in e-business. So BPR involves radical alteration to the design of business processes to improve the firm's cost product quality, efficiency of production, and service to customer. It has, an F, it has an emphasis on linking innovation to improvement in business processes to improve the performance of the firm and help achieve a competitive advantage. So in e-business, BPR has most commonly focused on technology as a means of implementing change management. So the, re the redesign of organizational structure is also an enabler of 
of BPR. So this has become an integral part of change management in e-business alongside that of introducing new technology. So next we have a, a smaller tier no, of change which is a business process improvement. So BPI is a less radical approach to change than BPR. It is incremental in scale and involves introducing change to optimize existing processes using information technology. So BPI offers an alternative to more radical scale of change represented by BPR. So small incremental changes are easier to manage and control since they focus attention on identified activities within the organization. So for example, a new application software may be introduced to increase efficiency and service in distribution. This improves a current business process by investing in a particular information technology that is designed for that chosen process. So over a period of time, other business process can be improved by introducing appropriate information technology. The risk and reward associated with BPI are less than associated with BPR. So BPI may be an option for firms who lack the resources, either financial or human. So to undertake, uh, to undertake radical change. So alternatively, incremental change may be the most appropriate approach for the organization. It may be risk averse, but need to take uh, measures to improve performance over time. Okay? So considering the fact that you're trying to uh, improve services or processes in small increments, there would be a problem in the long run since those small increments are uh, probably... I assume, independent with each other po. No? So there is no streamlining of processes po. No? Which, yun po, yun yung lalabas na uh, performance issues uh, in the near future or over time. No? <clears throat> Next, we have the practicalities and tactics of implementing change. So there are several practical measures that managers of an e-business can take, into implement, uh, take to implement change. There are also several tactics that can be used to manage resistance to change. The key successful change management is to choose the correct practical measure and tactics that ensure the smoothest transition from the status quo to where the organization wants to be. So practical measures for change include the following. So we have number one, changing personnel. So firms... Firms operating in the e-business environment seek to reduce cost of labor by automating many process functions traditionally carried out by humans. So personnel employed in an e-business need to add value, otherwise they are a liability. So change management may involve promoting highly valued staff and or removing those who do not add value. Okay. So next one, we have forming partners and alliances. So one of the key characteristics of e-business environment is the importance attached to forming partnerships and alliance with other organizations along the supply chain. So change management can be implemented more effectively when influential people in the partner organization lend support. So the relationships formed with partner organizations can prove invaluable when seeking to resource change through the skills, expertise, and experience they bring in the partnership or alliance. <clears throat> Next, we have changing te the technology infrastructure. So the way in which organization technology infrastructure is set up plays a significant role in determining work schedules, activities, and communication within an organization. So alteration to the technology infrastructure can force a personnel to change their behavior such that it is in alignment with proposed change at the organizational level. Next, we have training and education programs. So training programs are important aspect of educating and communicating to staff rationale, need, and benefits of change. Training is also a useful practical measure of ensuring that staff update their skills so they continue to add value to the organization. So training is also necessary 
for staff to cope with the challenges that change presents. <clears throat> Next, we have participation. So this tactic involves worker in the design change. So participation helps workers understand the need for change better and the involvement in the process of change act as a motivator and encourages acceptance of change. Next, we have through negotiation. So this tactic is a formal approach to achieving cooperation of workers. Uh, negotiation uses formal bargaining to gain acceptance for a proposed change. In effect, this tactic buys the acceptance of change by workers because the organization, organization has offered concessions in exchange for the goodwill of workers. Next, we have the so-called manipulation. So this tactic involves covert attempts in influence people regarding change. So managers may seek to target particular individuals or groups of workers to emphasize the benefits that change will have them. Okay. Then lastly, we have coercion. No? So this tactic involves the use of formal powers to force change. So coercion may include the removal of rewards, sanctions, or even job losses if workers refuse to accept change. So this tactic points to a failure of management to develop culture where change is introduced by means of other than threat, than the threat of sanction. So ito pong last one yung pinaka dinidiscourage po natin. Kasi definitely there, this will cause a backlash po. No? So in in line with the, the tactics now that we can use for change, we have also the responses to change. No? So assuming that we apply change, this will this are the following uh, responses po, no? na pwede po mangyari. So change brings about different emotions in different people. But it is important for, for, for firms to recognize the general response to change exhibit, exhibited by workers. So workers' responses vary within the organization and between different organizations. However, it is possible to establish a series of responses that help managers to choose the appropriate tactic for implementing change. So we have four po, which is acceptance, resistance. No? So from good, from best outcome to worst po. No? Okay? So first, what is so first, what is acceptance? So acceptance is the best case scenario for managers since workers recognize the need for change and embrace the proposals for seeing it through. So in modern businesses where the competitive advantage is sought through innovation, creative, and knowledge sharing, the concept of change should be an integral part of the working environment and should be the dominant culture. So acceptance po yung pinaka best scenario that we can have with regards to change. Okay? Next, we have the so-called grudging acceptance. So grudging acceptance is an unsatisfactory response from workers in an e-business environment and requires managers to choose an appropriate tactic to remedy the situation. <clears throat> so this can be a number of reasons, including number one, fear of losing something valuable. Number two, it's the fear of the unknown. Number three, it's the fear of losing status or privilege. Number four, it's belief that change is not good for the organization. Then number five, we have the belief that change requires skills and experience not currently possessed. And lastly, we have fear of being made redundant. So all of these are human fears no? with regards to change. So, yung susunod po natin is yung grudging acceptance. Next, we have naman po the so-called passive resistance. So, passive, passive resistance is similar to grudging accept, acceptance from an operational perspective. However, passive resistance suggests a deeper mistrust among workers to the proposed change. At least kasi yung grudging acceptance is at least they accepted po the change. However, they still have fears about it. Okay? With passive resistance naman po, from the word it says resist, okay, we are expecting that there is a uh, there is a significant difference po in terms of 
their uh, perspective po no dun sa change po na yon compared to grudging acceptance so here managers may have to go beyond education communication and participation to bring the workforce around to embrace change so it may be uh, necessary to engage in negotiation in order to buy commitment to change okay and last yung pinaka worst po natin is the active resistance So active resistance is where workers refuse to accept the change and actively seek to undermine it by refusing to carry out tasks. So not accepting responsibility and in extreme cases by destroying the means of carrying out the new task. So basically they try to sabotage po no uh, uh, the process no or the system. So this is clearly an extreme situation and requires managers to completely revamp their human resource strategy in order to create an entirely new organizational structure that is geared towards accepting change. Okay? So, as a summary po ng discussion natin, uh, change management is, a, is necessary when firms seek to improve their current performance through changing their infrastructure and internal process and activities. So a force field analysis is a method of looking at change to analyze support and resistance to change. Uh, managers must study the scale of change necessary for the firm to undertake to achieve their aims. And we can either use re-engineering our processes or simply improve our processes. Each level of change has its own level of risk and reward. Next, we have there are several practical measures that the manager can take to implement change. The key is choosing the correct practical measure and tactic to ensure the smoothest transition. Then we have managers should always observe the response to change and change brings out different emotions in different people and this directly affects the whole process of change. And last one, uh, worst comes to worst, a paradigm shift might be necessary if the change did not deliver the desired results. Po. So that is it po for my presentation, uh, Sir Marmelo and my dear classmates. So thank you for listening po. Okay, again. Uh, because of uh, globalization, rapid customer changes and technological advances, Complexity continues to uh, emerge in globalization. So complexity uh, arises a system in which uh, internal and external forces continually uh, fall in tag, no? which uh, leads to tension. So an architectural ar uh, enterprise solutions reliant on internal and external, uh, an external stakeholder relationship is also complex adaptive system. No? The Project Management Institute or the BMI recommends a tailoring mentally grounded be dexterity and agility. So planning, implementing, and uh, driving value in enterprise architecture is to our values. Solutions require adoption of flexibility. So the, in, the enterprise architecture benefits of an organization by providing foundation structure and insights to make the business process system and people. So the enterprise architecture Uh, can provide value to an organization by making informed decision counting of for resource constraints, cost effectiveness, risk management, and feasibility when challenge, challenged with the process of project portfolio manage of uh, PBM. So although uh, PBM is embedded in the organization strategy to accomplish objectives, it's challenging to identify, prioritize, and support or reject operational change impact end-to-end. Uh, Horst Deno validates the need of integrated project management and um, organizational change management for successful business transformation. Again, in change management, it broadens the definition of change management as the application of a st structure process and set of tools for lead the people side of change to achieve the desired outcome. Ultimately, the successful uh, individual, uh, enterprise architecture uh, practitioner must focus on the technical side no? uh, of change and the people side of change. No? Uh, the PM book actually offers distinct paces, methodologies, and tools for success in project management, where uh, change management focuses on the people affected by the change 
enable them to engage and adapt of use of this change. So to embrace the agility, the enterprise architecture solutions uh, establish a direction for the organization that integrates stakeholders, digital assets, and processes. Now, an organization will probably develop a vision and mission for the information technology initiative in planning the in, uh, enterprise architecture solution. It is appropriate to begin by complex endeavor by clearly defining the purpose and desire uh, stakeholders. So, however, since they are rooted in the standardization procedures, the enterprise architecture solutions are inherently inflexible and unbending. Uh, so, the complex nature of the, uh, the enterprise architecture solutions and the surrounding organizational environment instead calls for flexibility because adaptability is favored over process rigidity in planning a, a enterprise architecture solutions effectivity. So uh, it is also provided an insight uh, implementation in the public sector. No? Uh, enterprise architecture development primarily focuses on business processes, technology solution, but cannot address the challenges of developing, implementing, and adapting the enterprise architecture in our organization. It appears that not uh, adequately addressing the people's side of changes continues to raise its ugly head. No? So for value, as the word importance of usefulness of something, organization can focus on values that determine benefits when striving for successful program out outcomes. No? Let's say, for example, uh, value components such as portfolios, program, project, projects, products, and operations are based, used in individually or within a group to create value. So when uh, working together, uh, these components comprises a system for delivering value aligned with the organization strategy. Overall, a uh, project must end value to organization and realize the expected return on investment. So... The best strategy can be useless without proper implementation. And we know, we know that, no? Because the enterprise application journey should start by monitoring the evolution of the process in, in, improvers, no? Uh, balancing risk-taking and risk mitigation to support innovations while ensuring compliance and cost optimization are essential in the managing uh, enterprise architecture. Uh, incentive uh, successfully. Uh, the complexity of enterprise architecture is critical factor in project success. Tangible benefits cannot be top down approach without propiotic integration of the process improvers in the everyday practices of the organization practices. No? Uh, again, the enterprise architecture is inherently rigid. Successful strategy for uh, enterprise architecture, transformation, leverage, agility, flexibility, and adaptation. So. Uh, the a synergy of EA with other disciplines such as project management, change management, and organization theory. This uh, enterprise architecture strategies will contribute and deliver value and implement a successful change initiative. So I think that's it for this discussion.